Glory to Jesus Christ. So we're reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, from the 11th chapter, the 25th and the 30th verses. And let's pray. The Lord, open your word to us and grant that we might live trusting you, always coming to you with our burdens, with our sorrows, with our struggles, and also with our joys and everything. For you are the fullness of our hope. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And how is it that a yoke can be easy? It's, it's, it's you know, difficult. It's not you know, a, a fashion accessory. And how can a burden be light? Then wouldn't it be not a burden? Well, we see this at the beginning of this passage. I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. It's being childlike in trust, trust in God in the midst of everything. That there will not only be ultimate relief if I persevere in grace, the reality of heaven, the reality of full union with God, with all the, every tear wiped away, as the prophecy of Isaiah and the book of Revelation tell us, tells us. But also now, here, as we grow in trust, because in heaven we won't need trust, we won't need faith, we won't need hope, but here we definitely need the trusting faith. We definitely need trusting hope. We definitely need trusting love, and we definitely need to put them into practice. But we're not relying on ourselves, pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps, but relying on God's grace and cooperating with that grace. And what's childlike? It's not childish. We know childish. You know, the selfishness, the peevishness, the uh, self-centeredness, all of these things like that, that's childish, which often uh, masquerades as sophisticated. But childlike is humble. Childlike knows it's not the center of the universe and is dependent and manifests its love and wonder in the face of everything and is willing to act out in joy is willing to, uh, to, uh, to learn, is docile in the sense of, of being uh, curious and curious about the, what is truly spiritual. And uh, Christ took a child and placed him in front of the disciples, could have been one of the apostles' children, and presented the child's situation as what the believers in that you are totally dependent. The child was totally dependent on, on the parents and on, on others. And uh, a truly childlike person is obedient, uh, is, is a good, quote, unquote, good child. But of course, it doesn't mean being immature that's childish. And of course, you know, a child should be mature according to his age, whatever that is, his or her age. But we, especially as adults, need to be mature emotionally and intellectually, but also spiritually mature. 
And he says these things, the uh, most obvious things of the spiritual life, are hidden from the so-called wise and the people who think they know everything. Because if you think you know everything, you can't learn anything. So, uh, the cunning of the world, which uh, disguises itself as as wisdom, but is 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 a long run. It's deceit and manipulation, <coughs> and it's enslaving. Not only enslaving of others, but enslaving of the person who thinks he's on top. But the the freedom of the believer, the perfect freedom, which comes from throwing oneself into divine service and into divine love uh, and, and, you're, and you're free even if you're imprisoned but if you are imprisoned by greed by uh, cynicism by any vice It might disguise itself as freedom, you know, license always does that, but it's the opposite, it's an enslavement. So, when you reveal them to the childlike, to the truly humble, to those who are willing to pursue the truth, even if it's difficult, even if it, it doesn't put me on top, even if it it discloses my responsibilities in in life the responsibilities that I may not want to have yes father such has been your gracious will all things have been handed over to me by my father so in, in the reality of the incarnation well, of course God is one being the Trinity is one being but distinct in person and they're all equal the persons are equal so the father is the spirit of Father doesn't come, has, doesn't have priority in time or anything. It doesn't come before the Son of the Holy Spirit. And they're uh, equal in all things and uh, infinite and eternal. So, uh, what is this handing over of the Father? Well, it's, it's the Father gifting everything out of love, because that's eternal relationship to the Son in the power of the Spirit and the Son turning everything over to the Father in uh, in that same relationship and the Father uh, re-gifting us in the power of the Holy Spirit. So this constant, the giving of the self and the giving of all that one has and of course that's everything. But we share in this now, too, as adopted sons and daughters of God the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit through the merits of Christ. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, which, of course, is true, and uh, no one can know the essence of God except God. Yet, we are brought into this relationship, this love relationship, and we can know, quote-unquote, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Son, by the revelation, the fullness of the revelation, which is the Son. No one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. And he wishes to reveal the Father to everybody because his uh, gift of love is universal. But it's up to us to receive it or not to cooperate with that gift. And then he says, which is one of my most consoling meditations of the scripture that we have there, the, the beautiful image, come to me. He doesn't say, come crawling to me. He doesn't say, uh, you can't come to me unless I force you to come to me. And I don't want you. No. He says, come to me, all you who labor in a heavy burden. And who is it who isn't laboring in some ways, interiorly? Who is it who isn't burdened in some way, interiorly? Uh, not to mention burdened exteriorly in life. 
come to me all who labor. But I often think of, of being in labor, the, a woman giving birth also, as well as, as struggling, sweating through things. Interior labor, interior struggle, as well as exterior. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus is saying that. Okay, I'm not, I didn't come that, uh, for condemnation. I came that you might have life and have it to the fullest, which involves an authentic rest. The, uh, the serenity, the harmony, even in the midst of inner struggles in this life. So he uses this interesting image, or the image of an ox, two oxen actually. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourself. Or, or literally, you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And this is how it becomes a, an easy yoke and a burden of light. Now, uh, I don't have a personal knowledge of oxen. But I'm told in the time of Christ, if you were fairly well off, uh, you've saved up, and you had a field, you would want to get an ox. So, to, to plow, because it, it, it would, the plow would go deeper uh, if pulled by an ox. Also, the ox would fertilize the field. And uh, you'd train the ox so that it knew what to do. And you'd want a docile ox, as Jesus says. Uh, it compares himself to that to a docile ox, uh, who's meek and humble of heart. Because an ox is bigger than you are. The ox really just says, I don't want to do this. I want to eat uh, the uh, grain in, in the neighbor's yard, in the neighbor's field. <coughs> and there's not much that you can do to stop him, if he's so determined. And God lets us go off if we're so determined. Because we're not being forced into salvation, or forced to stay in salvation, in the state of grace. Uh, Otherwise, it's not grace, it's not a gift. If it's forced, it's not a gift. Uh, but it, it is the greatest of gifts. To freely given and to be freely received and cooperated with. So anyway, you get this ox and you train this ox. And the ox gets older as time goes on. And it's a big ox, of course, you want a big ox. Uh, so uh, you're even a bit more prosperous now that the years have gone on and you get a young ox which is usually a castrated male cow, cattle, a bovine and so you how do you instruct this ox? You yoke it on to the older ox. Now uh, St. Paul says do not be unevenly yoked because it would be like that. Um, I'm talking about marriages. Don't marry unbelievers. Don't marry people who uh, don't share your ethical views uh, and spiritual views and things like that. Uh, who don't have the same principles that you have. I prefer principles to values. Values is a subjectivist thing. Uh, yeah, you know, I value things, but uh, that necess necess isn't necessarily a question of a principle. I can value uh, soft serve vanilla over uh, uh, scooped uh, cocoa, uh, ice cream, but uh, it's not a question of principle. This is a question of principles. To follow the lead, we can't actually say the lead here, because the the guy who's directing the ox is behind. He's holding the plow. And if you had a really good ox, you could just let it do it itself, I suppose. Uh, but um, so you get this young ox, and you you lick it up. You put it in. What's the first reaction? You know, have you ever had a cat that had, they had to put those cones on the cat, you know, uh, so it wouldn't lick its wounds or do something, whatever, 
open up its stitches or something. And how does the cat react? The cat is very unhappy with this this new uh, piece of of uh, equipment. Uh, but the cat has to get used to it. So the once the young ox realizes, well, all I have to really do is rely on the big ox and go along with the big ox. And then that, that the, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. So it is with us, relying on our Savior Jesus Christ as Savior, as Lord, as example, as everything, as source and, uh, and goal. And so, uh, in, in all that, yes, even in the midst of our tears, in the midst of our struggles. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We may not feel it all the time. We may not feel it initially. But it is because we trust Christ. We trust his promises. Yeah, we trust his threats too. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. So let's pray thee, our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen and may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen and peter mercurio will Give a wave there.